Welcome back to Off the Schneid. Today, we're going to take a look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers talking about their draft needs heading into the 2022 NFL Draft. Obviously, above me, you can see their draft needs and then their draft capital above that. 27th overall. I think they were, what, 20, 30, 32nd, I guess? They won the Super Bowl. So, yeah, the year previous. I do have more needs on here than any other team. I put six needs. Most time, I only did top five. But it's a bit of an interesting spot, and we'll kind of work through it here, um, you know, piece by piece. So, let's obviously, uh, Bruce Arians moves on. Todd Bowles is the head coach. By Byron Leftwich is still there as the offensive coordinator. I thought that Todd Bowles was going to go to the Bears. That's, that's where I had him landing. But obviously you know it was probably I don't know if it was talked about behind the scenes beforehand but you know it worked out and Todd Bowles is a he deserves it man he absolutely deserves it I like Todd Bowles a lot I think he deserved to be a head coach and uh, you know it wasn't looking like he was going to be but here we are and he gets the opportunity to stay where he's at and be the head coach of the Bucks. so we'll see how that all works out there's a lot of chatter about the Tom Brady situation with you know, with Todd Bowles and Bruce Arians and, you know, how that all worked out and he wanted them gone. And I don't know who knows what the truth is. Like realistically, none of us know what the truth is. And the only people that know the truth are inside the Bucks building and they're not going to tell us what it is. We maybe will find out in a few years, but we'll take it from there. There's talks about Tom Brady getting traded to the Dolphins. That's just not going to happen. Um, yeah, it's not going to happen. You know, people are playing a lot of Madden in their head right now and on Twitter and stuff like that but this is the real world we're living in and Tom Brady is going to be the head head uh, uh, starting quarterback for the Tampa Bay Bucks this year so let's get into it here um, like I said Tom Brady comes out of retirement to join this team again he's going to play one more year and I, I do think that this will be the last year I really do you know they can't play these games this is the last year in his contract if my memory serves me correctly he signed a two-year deal he's just going to play it out and then walk away this will be a playoff team most likely again especially in a weak NFC division and uh, conference the NFC is just weaker than the AFC this year it is what it is um but I do think he walks away, and I think they have this heir, his heir apparent on the roster. I really like Kyle Trask. I really, really do. I was looking forward to him getting an opportunity to at least compete for the starting role and probably win it. I thought he was going to win it and be the starting quarterback here until Tom Brady unretired. But I do think that he's his heir apparent. Uh, they brought back Blaine Gabbert just because you know he knows this offense. He's been around the league a long time. He is a very good backup quarterback. But I think that you know if anything should happen injury wise to Tom Brady I think that Kyle Trask jumps the line and he becomes the starter for this team but we'll see what happens so there you go there's the quarterback position I think that they're set for right now and the future I, I do like Kyle Trask quite a bit and I'm looking forward to seeing him play some you know regular season games for this team you're obviously hoping it's not this year, but next season once Tom Brady moves on. We'll move to the running back spot. Leonard Fournette comes back. Great decision by him. Um, you know, he's going to be the three down bell cow for this team. You know, he really, really is. He's, he should have a very good season for this team. Um, it's a good offensive line. He catches the ball a lot. Tom Brady loves him. He trusts him, all that kind of stuff. And then Gio Bernard, quality backup. Keyshawn Vaughn, he had a good, you know, for what, for the limited opportunities he got, he had a good season last year. If he gets some more opportunities, maybe he'll excel again. Maybe he'll fall apart. They have been bringing in a lot of and talking to a lot of running backs for this year's draft. You know, they got 60, 91, 133. Um, so they have been meeting with a lot of running backs. And I, I, you know, going off of that information, I do expect them to add one in the draft, but won't be till at the very least the third round. I'm probably looking at the fourth round where I'm drafting some sort of running back, probably a big body guy, guys like Pierce. I think uh, Rashad White has been in the mix for this team. We'll see what they end up doing, but realistically, it's going to be Leonard Fournette for this season and probably next season as well. And then we'll see how it shakes out from there. Tight end position is in an interesting spot. Obviously, Gronk is still technically not on this team. He's retired, it seems, but you know, I'm expecting any day for him to come out of retirement and join Tom Brady again and have one last kick at the can kind of a thing. That's that's what I'm expecting. I'm fully expecting him to play. He had 800 yards last year. You know, obviously the the connection and the friendship between Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski is is a major driving factor into why I think he will come back 
back and be on this team. And then Cameron Braid's still there as well, who's a quality guy, quality depth guy, backup. You know, he can start in a pinch and he can do a lot of good things. Um, I do think that they add a tight end at some point. I think that even if Gronk comes back, you know, Cameron Bray can still be there, but I think they should look in the draft for, you know, there's a lot of quality depth quality tight ends that you wouldn't want to start this season but if they get some reps and they're they're a backup and they can learn behind a guy like Gronk with Tom Brady they could come in next year and be that starting tight end once Gronk and Brady both retire so we'll see how that works out but I do look at a a tight end this year I really do we'll move to the offensive line it's still in a really good spot even though they lost some pieces in Alex Kappa Ali Marpet retired obviously Um, But they brought in Shaq Mason and that's probably, you know, you could definitely say that's an upgrade. Shaq Mason's very, very good. Tristan Wirfs is very, very good. Uh, Donovan Smith, fantastic. Ryan Jensen, you know, plays on that line, but he's a very, very good player. And, you know, obviously what he does works and he's a very, very good offensive line. Very good leader on that line as well at the center position. So they're set except for left guard. They're going to absolutely have to look at left guard and, and, uh, um, that might be what they select in, in 27th overall there. You know, Zion Johnson, maybe Kenyon Green, guy like that, that you can, you know, just uh, come in and be your starting left guard right now. And, and you shouldn't miss a beat at all as far as this offensive line is concerned. Um, what I probably do is I look at more of a left tackle that can be my swing tackle if need be. So I have them start at left guard. But if I if I if there's an injury to, you know, Wirfs or Donovan Smith, I can slide that guy to either one of those positions. Positions, but he's starting right now at left a left guard as well. But you know, again, like Zion Johnson and and Kenyon Green, those guys are probably going to be better options at left guard to you know complete this line. So it's one of those two things is what I'm doing with the Buccaneers. Um, and then you know, if you are taking a left tackle and planning to do that, maybe you wait till 60th overall. I'm not sure, but that, that's kind of where I'm seeing what I'm seeing and what I'm looking at if I'm if I'm running the Buccaneers. Uh, let's move to the wide receiver position. Mike Evans still, you know, usually criminally underrated, always has been, for some reason always will be. He's one of my favorite wide receivers in the NFL. I've always been a massive, massive fan and believer, supporter of Mike Evans. Eight straight thousand yard season. You know, he's looking at his ninth. He'll probably get this year. The record is Jerry Rice with 14 straight. Um, second place on that list is 10 straight. So he's pushing that. And that was Randy Moss. So realistically, you know, Mike Evans is right up there with some of the greatest wide receivers to ever play the game. And it seems like nobody cares and nobody talks about it. Nobody wants to believe it, but it's just, he's that good. He is. So, you know, he should have another quality year. Uh, Chris Godwin ripped his ACL. You know, he should be back by the start of the season. And uh, hopefully he's back to where he was at. He's he's a very, very good uh, wide receiver, especially in this offense. I believe they franchised him or did they get a deal done? I can't remember. Let me know in the comments on that one. Either way, he's on this team for this year. Russell Gage comes over from the Falcons. He's a very quality slot receiver. You know, I think he'll excel in this offense and I think Tom Brady will be happy to have him. He's fair, fairly sure-handed and he does some good things up the seam and, uh, you know, he's not afraid to catch the ball over the middle of the field, which is very important, um, you know, in a Tom Brady type of an offense. Tyler Johnson's still there. I've always liked him. You know, when he gets a shot, he usually does well. He kind of fell off last year, but, you know, I think that he was kind of, you know, trying to fit a square peg into a circle hole type of a thing last year. Um, Scotty Mill is still there. Jalen Darden is a very, like, underrated gadgety type of a guy punt and kick returner type of thing hopefully he's going to be your slot receiver of the future type of a guy I, I definitely like what he can do and then Brashad Perryman just uh, kind of always been just a burner you know down the field type of a guy he, he's a quality vet who's been on this team last season had some success so there you go I think they're fine at wide receiver I, I really don't address it whatsoever I, uh, I I have the guys on my roster that can all play and they you know can chip in in special teams and stuff like that I'm fine with my my offense. Realistically, as long as uh, if Gronk comes out of retirement, this offense is completely set with the exception of that left guard position. So we'll see how that all shakes out. And I don't think they'll have too many issues completing this offense. I really don't. 
Um, let's move it over to the defensive side of the ball. It's still going to be Todd Bowles' defense. Uh, I think uh, Larry Foote is a co-defensive coordinator and another guy. I can't remember his name either, but um, there's two guys as co-defensive coordinators, but realistically, it's still Todd Bowles' defense, and he might continue to call plays much like uh, Mike Tomlin does in Pittsburgh. But we'll see how that shakes out either way. It's not going to miss a beat, and it's not going to change at all. It's going to be the same defense. Um, we'll see if uh, Dom Kinsu comes back. He had six sacks last year for this team. You know, I, if I'm the if I'm the Bucks and I'm Sue, I bring him back on. You know, I'm not sure how much you, you can invest in him financially, but I bring him back and and bring him back for one last kick at the can with Tom Brady, Gronkowski. You know, those three guys. You, you just say, hey boys, let's go try to win another championship and then ride off into the sunset, kind of a thing. So I bring him back. Uh, we'll see if that shakes out. Vita Ve is one of the probably the best best nose tackle, pure nose tackle in the NFL. He's number one for me. He's fantastic, the things that he can do, and he's a phenomenal leader. Um, William Golson can still get the job done for sure. Rakeem Noches, Nunez Roches, you know, has penciled in right now, but if, if Ndam Kinsu comes back, he's going to be that guy at that position. I do have it as a need here. If Sue comes back, it's obviously less of a need. Same thing with the tight end here. It, that's why I have six up here, because if Sue comes back, defensive end is much of a need. If Gronk comes back, tight end is less of a need. So we'll see what shakes out with these older aging vets, if they come back or not. Um, if Either way, I think they need to grab a defensive end because, you know, Sue's going to retire very soon. Noches Ro- or Nunez Roches just isn't quite that guy. And then uh, William Golston's getting older as well. So I do think they need to address it regardless. It's just a matter of how high of a priority that is, um, you know, depending on if they if they bring back Sue or not. One thing that I think that they could do with that 27th overall, I know they like him. They've, they've been in talks with uh, uh, Perion Winfrey. He could be that guy that comes in and starts right away for this team. I could see that at 27th overall. And then you go with, like I said, a left tackle at 60 that you kick into left guard. And then he's your swing guy as well. That's probably what I do if I'm looking at this this draft capital and the needs on this team. Perrion Winfrey, I really, really like. And clearly they do as well. So I could see him coming in at 27th overall, address the offensive line in the second round. But we'll see what happens. And uh, keep an eye out for the mock draft if I haven't mentioned it yet. It'll come out in about a week. Keep an eye on the channel for that. Uh, let's kick it back to the edge rushers. Um, Jason Pierre, Jason Pierre Paul is gone from this team, but I don't think this team will miss much. To be honest with you, I really like what they have going on right here. Um, Shaq Barrett's obviously still a guy. Really, really like what he can do. Joe Tryon Shoyenka was their first round pick last year. He had a quality season and should take a step forward. But the guy that I'm looking forward to seeing more of is Anthony Nelson. Uh, he was a fourth round pick. Yeah, fourth round pick in 2019. He had three sacks in the final three games. He had one sack per game to end the season last year. He ended the season with five, uh, five in the last seven games that he played in, um, and then three to end the season. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with a little more opportunity. I think he can definitely be, you know, that number three edge rusher and start in a pinch if you need him to, no problem. There's not much drop off there. Um, you could add a guy for sure but I think with those three you know they're all young enough to still get the job done and they're all improving Shaq Barrett is what he is at this point which is very good but I think Anthony Nelson and Joe Tryon Shoyenka could take a step forward and with those three guys I'm happy with the the situation they have at, at edge rusher you could still add a guy but you know with the other holes on this team I think that you know maybe if you want to throw a dart in the seventh round on a guy that you really like maybe a small school guy something like that then sure I'm happy with that but I think you're you're okay you're really okay uh linebackers are in a great spot Devin White's one of the best linebackers in the game in my opinion and then uh, Levante David has been around forever he still can get the job done absolutely I really like KJ Britt out of last year's draft you know I think he can be a guy if called upon if need be plays on special teams that sort of a thing same with Grant Stewart I think he was Mr. Irrelevant last year um you know he's a very good special teamer he played really really well in the senior your bowl. I, I, I'm looking forward to him getting some more opportunity on the actual defense, but I think he's going to be a special team standout for his entire career, realistically. And if that's what you get out of Mr. Irrelevant, that's a quality pick, to be honest with you. So I think they're fine at linebacker as it sits right now. Uh, let's move it back to the back end. I do have corner uh, as a need and then offensive line depth. I, every time, every team, pretty much, if you watch a lot of these, 
offensive line and defensive backs, whether that's safety or corner. Every single draft, I think every team has to add one of each. That's just how I feel about it. Always have, always will. Um, Carlton Davis, Jameel Dean, and then Sean Murphy Bunting can absolutely get the job done. And Mike uh, Edwards is a pretty fantastic uh, uh, nickel corner. And then now that you have Logan Ryan and Antoine Winfield is fantastic as well. I think Logan Ryan can definitely still get the job done. He's a former corner. I do like what he can do. And then Keanu Neal is there as well as your inside the box, strong safety type of a guy. So they got a lot of guys that can do a lot of different things. But I do think that they need to add a corner, uh, like a not a nickel corner, obviously, uh, a full-on outside cornerback is what they need to add in this year's draft. Maybe with pick 91 is what I'm thinking maybe 133 whatever it is they need to add a corner in my opinion uh, just to get that depth and keep the train rolling if there's injuries or anything like that this is absolutely a playoff team um, they're gonna push you know this team is 13 and 4 last year they should be right around that again this is a weaker NFC it's even weaker than last year they should come out of this division on top um, and this is probably going to be the final year that they're really that you know kind of world beater unless Kyle Trask is definitely the guy which is very very possible so they might not miss a beat whatsoever, but we'll see how that shakes out in the future. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments there. Keep an eye out, like I said, for my mock draft. 27th overall, probably going to be an offensive lineman or Perry on Winfrey specifically at that 27th overall. We'll see what I do. Check the channel in about a week. It should be out. Um, yeah, there you go. Like I said, let me know what you think in the comments, but there's your breakdown for the 2022 Tampa Bay Buccaneers.